Hello, Adam Rayner, Talk Audio TV. This is the sixth in a series of seven unboxing and review videos of a bunch of six and three quarter or six and a half inch loudspeakers. Um, we've uh, had a very inexpensive set from uh, a company called MTX. We've had three ascending price sets from a company called Kicker. And now we're into the rarefied realms of uh, posh stuff from JL Audio. The C3 being the midst of the C2 and the C5. Now, um, these are all basically to do the same job. But they start at uh, 39 .99. This set, £329.99. And... 99 pesos, so 330 quid less a penny. Um, what do you get, and, and why are they quite that expensive? Well, one of the reasons is that you get a full set of engineering to mount them either as coaxials or components, which means that they come apart. So, here is the uh, instruction, little doodah. And you can see on there that there's a uh, separate passive crossover with these. Next thing out of the box is a little piece of protective foam. And uh, a rather handsome cardboard template just showing that uh, Joe will actually give a damn about your installation needs. Oh, it's a bit cool. In the top of the box, a whole bunch of uh, furniture. First, there's a bag of, well, little speaker connecty doodars. Let's uh, so get my face out of there. There's um, a couple of little steel brackets and a whole bunch of speaker forks and push terminal connectors and screws which i guess are for connecting onto the ends of posh wires whatever wires you supply to uh, connect up the passive crossovers and so forth this is a classic bag of screws and panel clips now they provide these panel clips except i reckon out of all the brands that supply them jl audios are the ones that really probably don't need to because not many of this especially this little speaker are going to be just screwed onto the metal panel they're going into a custom installation now, this is rather tasteful. We have here, on each side, a little collection of plastic hardware. Let's have a little closer look at these. Because the speaker is supplied with tweeters mounted onto the main base cone on a pole, which I think is what this piece is about. Or, you can surface mount the tweeter, sorry, flush mount the tweeter in a little plastic cup with a surround which is what this piece is about, and you'd put that into a panel, so, say, nearby in your door. Um, and then, if you want to mount it on a surface, there is a little cup that you put it in, and that would so that would just go mount flush on a surface, um, and you'd uh, point it at you. That's a little bit of an excrescence-type thing, but this is a standard thing that all people who supply tweeters separate to the base cones tend to do. So, big chunk of polystyrene, all the packing polystyrene in common with uh, the Alpine guys, whatever I was being pompous about it before. Oh, this is really nice. Is that Christmas? That looks rather handsome. Box of stuff there. No, the camera can see that. Let's take out these bits one at a time. First of all, this will be a passive crossover. Oh, lovely. Now, normally on a cheap set of speakers, you get just one little component. Um, Sometimes, if the speakers are designed just right, the speaker will be designed not to come to any harm if high frequencies are pumped into it and not to care too much about the bass. Other times, you really do want to control what's going where um, because uh, the speakers are rather more rarefied, I suppose. In, I'm talking piffle, but just look at this. Here we go. This is a high-quality passive crossover. Now, I don't know if you can see into that in 4K, you should be able to. Follow that upright, let's get the light in and just stop moving for a moment. I always think you're not doing it for long enough, Adam. I can't really see on the monitor. The coils are measured in millihenries and are known as chokes. That round uh, round bit and that little dotty bit are capacitors. I suspect that of being a thermal tweeter limiter so that if uh, you're going to blow your tweeter up, that goes open circuit for a moment. Those little white things are resistors. And what you do, um, mid-range presence and tweeter level, they're leveled at uh, reference, and you can see it says plus 2 dB. Now, they may be voiced such that when you plug them in, they're quite loud and strident to be above reference. But that isn't a plus. You can't add anything with a passive crossover. Um, I'm actually going to move those on both of these um, so the tweeter level and the mid-range presence are on high. Because both of those tweeter banks, I'm trying to say, um, both of those resistor banks 
I maintain that my little pointy pixie ears can actually tell the difference between any signal taken off the top. Anyway, I may live to regret that. So basically, you're looking at uh, mid-band and high-frequency passive crossover ridge going on there. With the two coils, I suspect we've got a uh, lovely um, low-pass device of high power for the uh, big bass cone. The point being that it doesn't saturate. You can put loads of watts up them. These are rated at what? How many watts are they rated for? It'll be saying it on the side. Let's have a look at these tweeters first. Yes, yeah, so I've shown you the uh, tweeter furniture and then move straight on to the passive. If I'd actually planned this or been a bit more intelligent, <laughs> I could have... Oh, political incorrect faces, sorry. I apologize. Um, there's wires through here. And this is that little cup I was talking about. Where are we? Oh, there's pretty look. So yes, you can wear your tweeter as a little unit. Come, sir. Or you could thread the do the other side here. La, 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 la. There we go. Just imagine that I'm actually a panel now. Yeah, that would be a, a flush mount sort of. So there we go. Any better? I'm not really sure I'm doing that very well. But the other uh, main method would be to mount them upon the uh, phase plug in the middle. Now, I'm very tempted to do that, but part of me wants to hear them as components, part of me wants to hear them as coaxials. Um, there's been a whole video I did with Chris Bennett that was uh, crucial cog at Celsius for a good long time. Um, and he maintained that playing them as coaxials was better. <coughs> Pardon me. Look at the beautiful magnet assembly on that. <coughs> That's a nice piece of metal mongery, isn't it? JL Audio. Very shiny. The grill looks quite plain. Instead of uh, putting the, uh, the sticky labels on last, there's a little tiny protective doofer on there. Oh, man. I'm afraid that's just decided me. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. That is a phase plug. Now, really, truly, there's no way that the sound coming off of that is going to be any better than that. If you put the tweeter in the way, it's got to affect the tweeter. And I'm listening absolutely in the near field. So, in the way that if you can see these beautiful little terminals as well on here, are size differentiated and labelled, I'm going to be connecting up some little bits of wire in between uh, this and this and the tweezers and we'll uh, we'll be playing with some full-on components now this is bending over getting this anyway anything else in here the um let's have a look if there's anything in the next layer down i don't think so i think this box of chocolates we've reached the bottom of yes we have because we've got all the bits and bobs out so there we go, the uh, the C3s. Now, 330 quid. Now, some of that must be to do with the fact that we're talking, you know, whole extra assemblages like posh components. But it says here that uh, the motor systems have been uh, DMA optimised. More linear woofer excursion capability than the competition. Higher output capability, deeper bass response, stronger mid-bass, less distortion, better power handling. That's a silk one-inch dome on there. It's an uh, edge-driven dome tweeter. That means that the coil is right on the end, on the, on the edges of it, obviously, with a neodymium magnet and ferrofluid loading. Now, that is really important. Smooth and non-fatiguing. That's an actual description of the listening experience. Using an audiophilic term, you do not see that on other manufacturers' boxes. Smooth, non-fatiguing. Extended high-frequency response. Excellent off-axis response at high frequencies, meaning even if you don't point these tweeters right at yourself, the off-axis response is designed so that they'll sound really super good when they're in your car. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's go and um, ooh, plug them on in. The C3 650 from JL Audio. 330 quid's worth of components that you can also mount as a coax. Interesting stuff. Oh, they do look beautiful, don't they? They look like posh. There's a slice of joy of possession for spending your money on these as well. So, here we are in my... Harry Potter Suburbia test rig. Yep, it's on the landing. Um, just to show the speaker positions in the middle here. Now I'll uh, pull.
pull on back and uh, give a little bit of blurred lines from that Robin Thick fellow at full deflection. Um, some people say you can't hear differences in audio quality on uh, YouTube. Well, of course, you're limited quite severely. But nevertheless, if there's more detail in, a little bit more detail out. It's not your